Hi friends, uh, today we have a Roland S10 that we're looking at. First of all, I wanna say, excuse the mess. Over the weekend, I did a drum session. It's messy. It gets always messy when you do drums. What I'm doing today, um, I'm looking at this keyboard. Now this is a sampling keyboard from 1986. It uses a 12-bit DSP, which either samples at 15 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz, depending on how long you want your sample length. Uh, and it's kind of cool because it has uh, four different banks um, which each hold their own set sample of about 1.1 seconds and you can actually combine them in a number of ways to make it so you can hold up I think 4.4 seconds right times four um, or there's a bunch of different options like one thing which I think is pretty common especially when you get a really natural sounding instrument is to do a sample for one octave sample for the next etc so you can spread it out along the keyboard but most of the time I actually just use a single sample that is um, pitch throughout the keyboard. And the reason is just because it takes a while to load files. Uh, because what this does, it uses a floppy drive down here, but it's not an ordinary floppy drive. It's a quick disk floppy drive, which is Roland's, I believe it's Roland's own format, though I've seen some other quick disks that were branded by different companies. So I'm not sure if they uh, enlisted other companies to make them as well, or if they use them in computers back in the day or something. I don't know. So uh, here are the quick discs themselves. And I actually own a whole stash of these because Roland made their own sound libraries um, that they shipped a couple with the unit itself. And I think you had to buy the extra and whoever bought this from got a lot of them. So I'm very grateful. Okay, so here in a great big basket of floppies, um, I got some random ones here, but um, as you see, I have it kind of organized. Uh, I have a number of them, I'm missing a couple. But for the most part, it's like all of the quick discs, nearly. There's like four or five that I'm missing. Um, and I do have duplicates of some. So if anyone needs any of these, let me know. The big problem I have with this machine is that for each sound, it is one side of that quick disc, right? So if you're loading A, B, C, and D, you're inserting the quick disc, loading it, taking it out, flipping it again, loading it, get it taking that out, getting another floppy disc, loading that in and then flipping it one more time, boom, and you have four sounds. Now, to do this in an actual show, that would be just chaos, because you know, you only got so much time between songs to load floppy disks in that time period is insane. Granted, it loads each floppy disk pretty fast, relatively speaking, but even that, that adds up. What really sucks with that is when you're loading this in and it'll give you a number of errors. Either just couldn't load the disk, illegal QD, who knows what that means, or IO error two. Now this unit has been doing that since day one. It's always had issues reading these discs. Of course they, they eventually work, but I just have to try it like a hundred times before to get a uh, disc to properly load up. And I don't think it's the disc fault either because a lot of these are in pretty good condition. So I haven't done anything about it for a while. And I know that there's um, emulators out there. I think the floppy emu has one that's compatible with this keyboard that completely replaces that and gives you a digital interface and everything. And that's probably the way to go, especially if you're planning on doing live stuff with this. But even better, which I can't believe I didn't think about this before, I have not cleaned the floppy drive, you know, um, the actual laser that reads the disc. And that's probably what the problem is. That or either some grease or something. I think I just need to do some maintenance, uh, general maintenance, just to get it working better and hopefully that'll do the trick for me. So I'm gonna open this guy up and show you the inside. So I got a little carried away and I've already unscrewed, I think there's about four or five screws along the back here. And there's three screws on each of these sides. And then uh, once you unscrew them, you pop them up and take them out because there's little clips on there. So don't be forceful on these, uh, you don't wanna break them. So once you get the side panels off, each side will have two screws, one here and one here. I've already taken this one out, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out here. And I'm gonna flip this around, take out the other half. Now this panel should come off. Let's see what's inside. Wow, look at that. Look at, look at how much of a mess of wires that is. That's crazy. Um, so I could unplug all this. Oh, I really don't want to. If I can avoid it, I will. So I will put this to the side because we're just trying to get in here on the side here. Okay, so I've got a seven millimeter socket here to hopefully unscrew these guys. They can only come out from the top from what it looks like. 
They can't come out from the bottom. And I think they actually should slide out. I don't know. I think I need to take them all the way out. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, let's see what's next on the agenda. Ooh, hopefully this will pull right out. I could be wrong. Oh, there we go. So we're just getting the drive bit cover off now. So I just need to do a little extra wiggling and it came right out. There we go. So there's our drive bay cover and there's our drive. Uh, it looks pretty good. Definitely a strange mechanism. Like it looks a little bit different than your typical three and a half uh, drives, but we have our cover here and our little reader is down there. So I don't even think I need to take it out because all I'm going to be doing is just cleaning the head and hoping that makes a difference. Though I am going to check to make sure there's no gunk. You only need two things for this, um, besides, of course, the socket wrench and the screwdriver, isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips. For isopropyl alcohol, this is 91%, which I definitely recommend. If you could find it, get it. Because the 76% is fine, but this is just a little bit better. Um, I've actually seen 99%. I think I have some here, which is just crazy. Uh, the difference between 91% and 99% isn't too much, so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, but 91% is the way to go, trust me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my Q-tip, a little bit of the alcohol on there, not too much, and I'm gonna pull this up. Don't pull it too far because it has springs on it and you don't want to mess up the springs. And then I'm just gonna give it a little, little rubbing, a little massage. That should pretty much do it. Um, nothing crazy. Honestly, uh, it's kind of a disappointment. I'd rather it be a little dirty under here so that um, I would know what the problem is. Sadly, it's not that bad. I'm gonna do a little bit more checking around here. Make sure um, I don't see anything else wrong. So there's a bit more gunk in there, but it doesn't look crazy bad or anything. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now because I don't have a ton of time uh, to work on it. If I get errors, in the future after this, then I'll make sure to go back and uh, take it apart a bit more. Like I see this, there's screws, four of them, down on the bottom of the board that you can use to take it out. And of course the little, uh, the connector there will just pop right out. But I'm not gonna deal with it right now because it does read this, which is my thinking. It's just a little bit of dirt or something that gets in the way every now and then. Um, so let's put this buddy back together and see what happens. Time lapse time. Okay, let us see what the fruits of our labor look like. Now, uh, one thing I gotta let you know, this keyboard has a really strange power cable. Now, it's just a two prong, but this actual uh, cable, it's not IEC format, it's just a little a little strange. I remember whenever I got mine, it didn't come with it, and I had to look online to find that, and order something off of eBay. It's fine once you got it, but just something to think about. Cool, so we're all plugged in, ready to go. I have the quarter inch going out just to another base cabinet. So if it doesn't sound perfect, that's probably why. It's not a direct feed, but we're just making sure everything works here. Turns on, as expected, ready to go. Now this um, LCD, uh, it's not lit from one, I don't think it's lit. Eh, it's a little bit lit, but it's not very bright. It's fine for most cases. Uh, so let's load up some quick discs. We're pulling from Oops Stash. Yeah, my punch doesn't do C's very well. The one I particularly want to look at here is the CC Synths. Um, this is one I made. I actually sampled, I think my MoFo or something and got some interesting sounds out of it. Just that are very simple, single voice synth sounds. That'll be easy to load because it's just one floppy. So you take this guy, you plop that sucker in, and the light goes red, you hit, oh, it's loading already. Okay, load polykey, what do we got? IO error two. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know what the problem is. I gotta, I don't know, probably just replace it with the floppy emu, but that's a, just a pain in the butt. So instead, I'm gonna pop it in there again. And there we go. We got a load complete. What am I telling you? Because this keyboard actually can't do much. Like it doesn't have a filter. It, it technically does, but you have to like pre-process it 
and it doesn't sound very good. I, I would never recommend using the filter on this thing. Uh, but you do have this little modulation, which I don't think this actually has intensity. I think it's just on or off. So, yeah, it's just on or off, but you can hear it. And then of course you can pitch it up. So that's kind of cool. Sounds pretty chunky. And of course you can actually sample things right into the keyboard. Okay, let's uh, try another and see if it goes any better. Okay, yeah, in this case, um, we have one sample per side. So let's flip it to the back where you have square lead there. See what that does. Um, now I have to hit load. See, IO error two. Who the heck knows what that means? If you do, let me know. I need to know. But if I just keep doing this, it eventually loads. It's super weird. See, load complete. We actually have an arpeggiator here. We have an arpeggiator. I wonder if we can actually, um, yeah, arp rate. There we go. Let's bring it up. Very 8 bitty. So you can get some cool sounds. I don't think our problem's fixed, so. Just paying the booty. Uh, let's try just for fun, uh, loading up a different patch. Here's Grand Piano. I think this is actually. I don't know, the original guy made this. Who knows, it's it's either he copied an existing one or he sampled his own piano, I don't know. Let's try it. So in this case, I'm loading what, side, what was that? No, side A, B, what is that? Oh, okay, that was B. Okay, now I'm loading side A. So it knows that it's an A, B, C, D, right? Because we're using the full spectrum. Actually, I think this is split into four quadrants and then let's load the others hey, it's loading pretty well though that's that's a good sign <laughs> but yeah like imagine doing this on stage like oh just let me load up my four floppy disks you gotta do it every time you turn on the keyboard too it doesn't have any persistent memory it loaded like without a hitch though maybe it is these floppies or maybe i wrote these floppies with it being messed up but i don't know so maybe the signal's not super strong <laughs> Some of these keys are a little janky too. It does have velocity though. Can't do that with a real piano. But it works, you know, it's a piano. You can't fault it for that. And it's got, we've got a lot more here, drum sets, whatever. But I'm not gonna get into it. Um, oh, actually, um, I wanna show one more. I really like this sound. It's a warm pad sound. Uh, so it's super weird, because what you can do, you can actually select any one of those samples it has loaded. And you can kind of hear the loss of quality there. Whereas if I said A, like that sounds normal. You hear it loop there? That's because, um, the way this is configured, it can only pitch a note so much higher or lower or whatever. So it goes ahead and cuts it off at a certain point if you tell it that it's a lower note. Okay, loading warm pad. This should be C or D. It's C. Listen, listen. I just think that sounds so good. Um, it's a little bit lo-fi. Of course, we're going through a bass amp, so it, it totally does not sound as crisp as it normally would. But even then, it's got a little bit of like lo-fi grit to it, and I like it. So thanks for watching. Um, obviously, my fix didn't work, but it might work for you. It's just cleaning, you know, the head of the drive. There's only so much you can expect to get out of it. I'm gonna do a little bit more research. Hopefully, I figure out what exactly the IO error three mean. The two, two it was what that means and hopefully I can figure out the problem. Even then, the synth's still good because once you do get something loaded up, it performs fine. It's still a keeper, but just needs some more work. Hopefully I don't have to get the, the emulation drive, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, enough rambling. Thanks for watching.